it's Alex, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me for this week's Friday Sews. It's been a couple of weeks and that means I've got quite a lot to show you, um, including what had got to be my most favourite make this year. So I'm going to start off with what I'm wearing and this is the Fibre Mood Alina dress. Um, I was looking for to make something for the summer which was basically a long t-shirt a t-shirt dress and I decided to go with this one because it's the one you may have seen it it's not that recent um, that at the back has a separate top to the skirt the top is yeah you've got basically a cutout with the skirt has an elasticated waist here and the, the top part kind of flies above it um, and I just thought that might be a little bit more interesting than just a boring old t-shirt dress. Um, when this pattern came out I wasn't convinced by it at all and <laughs> I'm not entirely sure as I am now having made it. I'm just not sure uh, about the back business. I feel like doesn't it? I don't know. You tell me what you think. Um, I just feel it looks like a sort of slightly baggy, nappy effect at the back. I've, I did have a good look at the hashtag on Instagram before making this one. I think the ones that are more successful, to my mind, are where people have got a bit of a dip on this skirt part. So it sort of dips down a little bit which um, is obviously achieved by um, having a slightly longer piece of elastic in there. Um, if I were to make it again, which I'm not entirely convinced I would, um, I would do that. I would just watch the length of that elastic so that it wasn't as tight to the body and just gave a little dip. And I just think that gives a little bit more interest and you're still not revealing anything other than your back, are you? Um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm definitely going to wear it for, for what it is, for a kind of easy throw-on dress to just, you know, pootle around in. It's fine. I'm not the biggest fan of Fibre Mood patterns. I did have an annual subscription a little while ago that I cancelled. Um, in fact, I think I said that I would do a video on why I cancelled it and what I didn't like about them. Uh, which I haven't done because I just felt it was all a bit too negative and I wasn't feeling that I wanted to make such a negative video. Um, having said that, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the things I don't like. Um, I just feel that the instructions overcomplicate things and it's a bit frustrating. So for example, on the fabric requirements and, and the bits and pieces you needed, it suggested that you got stretch bias tape. It is a knit dress, obviously. And um, this fabric is a cotton knit from Leon's, my local fabric shop. I actually made a dress in the yellow color way of this fabric last year or the year before. Um, yeah, I like it because it's camo colors, but it's not strictly speaking a camo print. Anyway, um, yeah, so it suggests that you have a knit bias binding, a bias binding tape, which I didn't have and I just thought, oh, don't see why I'm gonna need that, I will improvise. And when I came to it, it's for the neckline. And I just think that, who needs to be faffing around with knit bias tape when you could just do a standard neckline like we're used to doing, where you, so I measured the neckline, deducted 10%, just did a strip, folded it over, made a loop, quartered it and inserted it in the way you would with any t-shirt or sweatshirt pattern, which took not very long and was far less fiddly than A, where do you buy by a stretch tape from? B, you then got to make it yourself, that's a faff. And I don't particularly, I'm not the biggest fan of bias binding, I'm I'm okay at it, but I just find it a fiddly nuisance. So I don't see why that was necessary. And the other thing that I found really annoying was that I got the fabulous, <laughs> fabuloso, um, printed my pattern pieces out. So I had the AO printed and they, 
the way that the skirt appeared on the pattern sheet it actually needed a little bit of extra length which I hadn't realized until I'd cut it out um, and so my skirt and top part at the back were about five centimeters shorter than the front um, so overall I've got a slightly shorter dress which isn't you know the end of the world but why do they make it so much more complicated I went to the trouble of you know having it properly printed out um, yeah so I just I always find something a little bit aggravating about fibre mood instructions so for me unless the design of the sewing pattern is something totally amazing um, I tend to steer clear the other thing it was actually in the background of my last video and I just completely forgot to show you it that I made is do you remember I made the Stan shirt I'm just getting it off there we go um, Stan shirt from PM patterns in a really nice drapey viscose I'll link that video in the description box if you want to see a proper review of that pattern um, it's the one that came with uh, shoulder pleats or without shoulder pleats and that time I made it without the shoulder pleats but I was intrigued because I thought whilst um, I've got not massively broad shoulders but I think those shoulder pleats are a great addition for anybody that worries about having sloping shoulders and wants to sort of square themselves off that's perhaps not such a thing for me but I was interested to see what the shoulder pleat version was like and I saw this fabric, uh, Simply Fabrics had, in this sort of fuchsia-y, purpley pink. And this is definitely a colour I have decided I can wear. Um, because pink, obviously, with my colouring is something I tend to avoid. Um, so I snatched up the fabric, desperate. I don't often find this colour in fabrics. Uh, if anyone sees any again, please let me know. Um, yeah, so I was pleased to make it and I made the version with the pleats. Actually, I could just put it on over the top of this, couldn't I? And I like it. There's a butt coming. Um, but this, I don't think, was the right fabric because it's a, I think it's a poplin. And I think it worked far better in the viscose because obviously it's nice and drapey and fluid. And this shirt has got all these fantastic gathers. And I really do feel, I kind of wondered whether this more structured fabric would have perhaps a, a nice look to it, a different look to it. And I, I, it's not that it's unpleasant, but I just don't feel that it's, that it's great. Um, it may be that it's going to look better when it's, if, it, if I wore it tucked in, demonstrated really poorly here, uh, if I wore it tucked into maybe a high-waisted pair of trousers and then you've got a kind of uber poofiness, technical fashion term that. Um, but my main thing is that this fabric is one that's a nightmare to keep crease free and I hate that. Um, I don't like ironing. I know it would take forever and a day to iron it um, and yeah I don't know. I don't know. I've got a horrible feeling that it's going to be one of those things that I've made and don't wear it very often. Maybe it's more wintry. Time will tell. It might become my new best friend. Who knows? Now I'm going to show you something that I've made that I absolutely love. Um, I am one of the many, many Minerva bloggers out there that get fabric, receive fabric from Minerva in exchange for a blog post. They send us a big long list every month and you get to choose what you would like for a particular project. I chose this um, velvet toweling. Um, I don't know if you remember, but I said a little while ago that the Sew Over 50 crew on Instagram had a mini me competition and you put a photograph of you when you were younger and um, a winner was picked at random and I was one of those lucky winners and I got some vouchers from the fold line. And in that photograph, 
I am wearing, as a little toddler, I am wearing a toweling play suit with a really fantastic, it would have been the early 70s, a really fantastic zip running through it with a big zipper pull. Um, and it reminded me of what a fantastic fabric toweling is, but I've also never sewn with it. And I really, really didn't want to do the obvious thing, which is to make a bathrobe with it. I wanted to make actual garments. And when I got this fabric, so obviously, yes, I have been gifted it, but when I got this fabric, it was so wonderfully soft to touch. I was, yeah, I was literally, my head exploded. I had so many ideas of different things I wanted to make. It is super thick um, and it is not stretch. It is a woven. It literally has no stretch at all. I have got from COS a really nice toweling sweatshirt, but that has got a bit of stretch to it. Um, but yeah, I wanted to make a garment and I was thinking of uh, jumpsuits. There is a Stylark jumpsuit. I think it's called the ED. Um, I was thinking, you know, nice summer dresses, this kind of thing, obviously not knit, but the sort of thing you could just throw one over whatever you're wearing. Um, but the thing that I really wanted to make was yet yeah, something that felt like loungewear, the sort of thing that if you if you were on holiday and you'd had a swim and maybe you want to put something a bit warmer on, you know, to have your G&T of an evening, low alcohol G&T in my case, um, or you've been gardening, you go and have a shower and but you want to sit outside in your garden and, and eat your meal, something that you could throw on and would still feel kind of relatively stylish but really nice and comfy so um that was my plan so then i had to look at patterns because obviously loungewear tends to be stretch and this is a woven and i came across it's actually a relatively new pattern from the sewing revival which is the classic pants and I'm an affiliate for the Sewing Revival, by the way, so the link that will be in the description box will be an affiliate link. I love their Sidewinder pants because they are the sort that have a flat front and a elasticated back. These classic pants are even more versatile than those because they can be made as shorts and they come with, I think, three different leg types. There's a tapered, a, a standard leg and a wide leg. And I thought that they would work brilliantly. However, obviously, um, I don't know why I'm saying obviously, but however, the specified fabric is things like linens and yeah, not quite as thick as this toweling. So what I decided to do was I made a wearable toile and I thought I had enough that I could make the shorts first to test out how they worked in this fabric. And they worked brilliantly. I cannot tell you how nice these shorts are to wear. So as I say, yeah, flat fronted, they have got pockets um, and an elasticated back. My concern with elasticated waists is that to me, I find that you often get a lot of excess bulk um, and I've really struggled. I've been looking for this kind of pattern for quite a long time. I've bought a few, I did buy the Pietra pants and I've not made them. I've really wanted one where the elastication at the back is there enough that you can, you know, wiggle yourself in, but not so elasticated that you've got just a load of, well, not dissimilar to this kind of effect, a load of extra junk at the back. Um, so I'll put these on. Okay. So I will insert my usual footage at the side. Um, I really, really, really like how they turned out. I wish that you could feel how lovely and soft this fabric is. And I did pre-wash it. So, um, you know, if you think about your towels at home, how when you wash them, and especially if you line dry them, they tend to be all a bit crisp, don't they? That hasn't happened with this. It is just as soft as it was when it arrived. The pattern suggests that you go by your hip size rather than your waist. 
So I chose a size 10, which was right for my hips and my waist is about a centimetre bigger than the size um, specified. But that has worked out fine because you've got the elastic at the back. Um, they do go up to a UK 24, which I think was about a 52 inch hip. So really good size range. Um, I did add a little bit extra elastic on the casing at the back just to allow for that extra fabric or extra width of fabric and the fact that my waist was slightly larger but actually if anything I would say they're a little bit loose and if I could really be bothered I'd unpick and adjust that but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, my concern was what the toweling would be like to sew without a shadow of a doubt there was a lot of fluff my overlocker yeah lots of fluff fluff everywhere and not just around the sewing machines I was traipsing it through the house for a day or two as well um but other than that really nice to sew I didn't interface the waistband on the shorts because um I wasn't convinced that that would work with the toweling but because this worked out pretty successfully, I did go ahead and make the full length trousers. And with the trousers, I did interface and it worked brilliantly. It interfaced really beautifully. So pressing it wasn't a problem at all. I'm really, really pleased. The only thing I did slightly differently was that you would normally, with the waistband, you would normally put it on in the very traditional way where your inside waistband, your waistband lining, you would turn under when you attach it. I didn't do that. I left it out and then overlocked it. I'll maybe take a picture of the inside to show you what I mean. Um, I just thought that that would be too fiddly because obviously with a fabric as bulky as this, you kind of don't want to do anything too precise and intricate. It's not going to work um, for a pattern with pin tucks or anything like that. But yeah, I was pleased enough to go ahead and make the trousers. So I did that and um, as I said, this time I did interface the waistband. Um, I didn't feel that I needed to make any changes to the sizing. I went with the standard leg or classic leg, whatever it's called, the one that's not tapered and not wide. And I equally love how they look. I'll put them on in a minute. And then to go with, I made a shirt. Um, and this time I used the, I mean, I really, I'm so glad I'm making this video because I've been dying to wear this. We've had really lovely warm weather in the UK. I know. Um, and just for when I'm poodling around in the garden and yeah, just mooching around, it would be perfect because honestly, it is so, so nice and soft. And um, it just feels so nice to wear, it really does. Um, but this time what I did was I used the same shirt pattern that I used for my shirt that I made from bandanas. It's the Pattern Emporium all-in shirt, all-in-one shirt, I'm not sure. I'm also an affiliate for Pattern Emporium, so links below will also be affiliate links. But with the shirt I made last time, the version I made last time was the one with the collar and the collar stand. And I think I said then, what's great about this pattern is it comes with both that kind of collar and a camp collar. They refer to it as a classic collar. Um, now, there's no way with this thick, bulky fabric I could have done a collar with a collar stand. So this time I did the camp collar, um, which, you know, was pretty easy to do actually. And I did find that, you know, I've interfaced that front placket there. It really wasn't tricky to do. And with the front placket, I did turn it in on the inside, unlike what I did with my waistband. Um, and actually it behaved beautifully. So even though it's, you know, not a classic fabric that we use for dressmaking, I really, really love it. One of the things that was interesting about this pattern was that when it came to the short sleeve, there were actually two 
short sleeve options. Well, in fact, there were three because there's one with a ruffle. But there's a wider short sleeve and a narrow one. I chose the narrow option. I'm really pleased by that because one of the things I find often with things that have short sleeves is that they are wider than I like. I don't like a short sleeve that kind of comes out at an angle. I like it to be narrower. So, yeah, that was a great option to have. But yeah, I'm super, super pleased with this little combo of the three items. I have also made another pair of shorts like I made last year. Again, I will add the, in the description box the video where I talked about them last time because that's a bit of a full review. Um, they are the Billy shorts from Jolie Lab. They're the ones that have like a paper bag waist to them and they come with either a tie belt option or a buckle. I found with the ones that I made last year that I never used the buckle option. I used the tie belt option, so I've only done that. Um, unfortunately, last year's don't fit anymore. So I've made them out of this linen that I have in my stash. I've had it, I bought it from Stein, uh, Fabworks quite a while ago. My only concern is I know it's got, it's linen and something, it might even be linen and silk, you know. Um, that this is one of those linens that creases like mad. So it's slightly in danger of looking like an old dish rag, uh, you know, within minutes. But I will insert some pictures and uh, we'll see if it's survived. I suspect even the pictures will be creased. Um, but I just wanted to remind myself of that pattern because I did find that these shorts to be a really nice um, shape. And I've also got cut out and ready to go um, some black stripy linen. Uh, literally ready to go. Uh, that's the pocket. Um, which is the same as these. So it's the classic trousers from the sewing revival, but the shorts again. I just think they're going to be easier to make. That's going to be a nice, quick, easy make because. Yeah, I mean the flat front and the elasticated back, it's dead easy, you've not got to worry about fastenings, flies, zips, any of that stuff. It's nice and quick and easy, so they're a great one. And I want to see how it looks in a, a regular fabric rather than this super bulky toweling. Um, so those are the things that I have made so far. I am planning to make some swimwear. Um, I've got some fabric arrived yesterday from Rainbow Fabrics, yeah, I kind of went a bit mad, um, to make, that's pretty vibrant, isn't it, to make swimwear. Um, I have also got some swim elastic on its way to me that I found from Etsy. It's quite hard to find. I needed one inch swimwear elastic. I'm pretty sure that I was trying to do this last year before we went on holiday and I gave up because I just couldn't find the elastic. Um, I could only find it in narrower um, amounts and I wanted a one inch. So uh, I did find it from a tailoring suppliers on Etsy. Um, this one here from Rainbow Fabrics is quite glittery. And I'm not sure that that's me, but on the wrong side of it, which way? Yeah, that's the uh, that side is a little bit more glitzy, and the wrong side is a bit plainer. So I may go for that. But I bought lots of that because I thought that I could also use it as a lining. Um, and there is a pattern that I bought last year that I'm going to attempt to make. I don't know. I've never done swimwear before, mostly because it's never really appealed to me. i have not. It's the sort of thing I don't really enjoy making. I find things that are very fiddly kind of annoying. We are planning to go on holiday, book a last minute holiday in the next few weeks, so it seems silly not to give it a go at least, doesn't it? Um, any swimwear sewing tips, please let me know. So that's it for now. Um, yeah, those shorts are on the agenda, then the, the swimwear desperate to make some summer dresses. I've got all these lovely print fabrics in the corner there and I was kind of hoping that there might be some new pattern releases that would sort of grab my eye. I, I don't know, I'm not feeling particularly inspired with dresses at the moment. 
if any of you've got any suggestions, please let me know. Um, yeah, I'm hoping we're supposed to have warm weather for at least another week, so if I pull my finger out, I might get a dress made as well. Anyway, that's me for now. I am off to just keep feeling how lovely and soft I feel. <laughs> um, and I will see you very soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.